Hello and welcome to Heart and Hustle, Visionary Healers, Movers, and Shakers. I am your tribal hostess and your transformational lifestyle coach, Paulette Reese Denis. In this program, I enjoy bringing you these magical, change making entrepreneurs who are bringing healing, inspiration, and love to the world. My desire is to inspire you to step up more fully into your life, into your passions and your dreams, and continue to make beautiful change in our world. You be the change you wish to see. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy our deep and lively conversations. Blessings to you. I know. I have to get everyone moving. Moving and good. good. And this is your morning, so this is your wake up call. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Paulette Reese Denis here. Welcome to another episode of Heart and Hustle Visionary Healers, Movers, and Shakers. So happy to have you join us today. I have a special guest today from way far away across the water and in from Hong Kong today as as she is a world traveler as well but she's settled in Hong Kong for the moment uh, let me introduce to you Ying Han Cheng and I'm so delighted to have her as a guest uh, she is a coach an author a speaker a global traveler wow you you are kind of like me. <laughs> you do lots of things, right? And that's so good. It's so good. So I'm, I'm really happy to, to share her with you on the show today. And she'll be here to tell you all about her fabulous doings and the work that she brings to the world as a motivational healer and inspirator and all those delicious things. So how are you? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yay. Yeah. And, and you just returned. She was just telling me she's been in like five different countries and has just gotten home. So where have you been? <laughs> As I just arrived from Manila, which, um, which was where we celebrated um, a lot of the province's um, harvest festival, the Bumbati festival, which is like a scarecrow festival um, with a lot of my friends. Um, and then before that, like 12 hours before I took off the flight to Manila, um, I was actually in Shanghai, where I was training um, a group of consciousness, um, traditional Chinese practitioners who are marrying technology, consciousness work, and TCM. Um, and that was a really, really cool project that's going to take off this year. That sounds um, great. Yeah. And then before that, I was in Berlin and Paris um, and uh, Europe, basically, uh, just checking out the conscious scene there. Um, and sharing the book that I've been um, touring, and uh, and that's been really leading the way. Like the book is like, no, and I'm just like, you know, the book. yeah, um, yeah. And then before that, I was in Wonder Fruit in Thailand, um, which is basically a. And this is December, and that's like a, basically a. Um, uh, Burning Man for Asia, and so there I was running five different workshops, which you know had people pile out the tents, you know, in the morning, getting to the workshop and doing their vision work, um, a lot of shamanic healing, um, as well as um, some of my work in the You Only Live Once orgasm and abundance. Mm -hmm. So that's your YOLO. Yes. Okay. So tell us about that. Okay. Ding, ding. This is the, what it looks like. This That's is the book. book. Yeah. Yay. It's the You Only Live Once Life and Business Style. A lot of people think of uh, if you're younger, then people think You Only Live Once is actually a really like, you know, say la vie, carpe diem, like sort of like it could be an irresponsible term, but it actually what it really means is truly connecting with your path, like, you know, your purpose and 
um, and what lights you up and living from that outwards. So not only does that mean, you know, in the way that you're treating your business or the way that you're treating your career, but also piles out through the way you treat your relationships, your clients, um, and the voice that you have in your marketing in the way that you actually run your business um, on a day to day, just like you, you know, how if freedom is one of your values, then you might find that a lot of travel will come in your place. Um, so that's that. And then so the way the thing that I do is I help people figure out what their YOLO life is and then close that gap um, through mindset, abundance work. And most recently, I found that the easiest way to get there is um, the energy of allowing and receiving, oh, especially for ambitious words. people. <laughs> those definitely have, those have been my words. Allow, receive, allow, yeah. receive. That's so good. And freedom. Freedom, too. freedom, fun, and inspired connections yes. are three of the I things that, it. yeah, that I pro like. I promote a lot and just have people really feel into. Mm, it's so good. It's so good. It's so, on some level, it feels so basic uh -huh. because that's how we just want to live every day. Exactly. And it's so complicated for so many people to to find that place to be okay with, with those those ideas and those values to right. and to receive. Because they, they could be such surface level words, right? Like fun, freedom, and inspired connections. Like you can be like, yes, of course, I'm living my life that way. But when you really look at it and you really meditate on it, you know, are you doing that? You know, are you expanding those emotions or feelings in every second of your day? You could, right? Like you can expand time just by feeling into it. And how can you do that when you're under a lot of pressure and you're really ambitious and you're going for a goal? Um, and that's the trick really to stay energized. Um, so a lot of energy management work goes, um, is, is the results or your way of um, expending your energy or how much work you can put out is a result of how much you honor um, those values that you have. Without getting into the overwhelm, without getting into the burnout, uh, yeah, it's good. So how, how did you get into this? <laughs> how did I get into it? <laughs> the question of all. Um, so I basically grew up um, all over the world. I was one of those kids who are called the third culture kids. So where your parents are born and uh, different ways in different cultures. So my parents were in Singapore and my dad was Taiwanese. And, um, and every two years I moved a lot. So so I like basically grew up in like three multiple different countries, went five different countries, like went to like 23 different school before like high school. And, um, and I had this lifestyle where, you know, I got to see a lot. Um, but what that also meant is that my expectation for life was huge. And what I ended up wanting to do each time when I moved to different schools was the first thing is to be liked. So my definition of success up until then was always like make my parents proud and be liked as much as I could. Um, and of course, that resulted in really a lot of confusion over like what is really going to make me fulfilled and make me happy versus like, you know, that traditional success route of like getting the best job in a corporate world and shooting for the top position, for example. And so, um, so, you know, that led to a lot of pressure, as you can imagine, it led me to do, you know, major in economics, politics, and uh, environment, it led me to do another master's degree, it led me to um, climb the corporate ladder at Ogilvy and Mather, um, you know, leading set countries, like seven countries of advertising um, work, and inside feeling secretly, like just dying. <laughs> sure. Um I'm sure some of you might be able to relate if you're in that position where you feel like you're just kind of a fraud or like you feel like there's just something wrong, you know, and, um, and that actually brought out a, a lot of um, disease in me or rather disease, which is in my world, um, that was in the form of a sickness, which was bulimia. And, um, and I had that for 10 years. Uh, and of course, being the person who always had a mask on, I would never tell anyone about it. Um, so I actually um, decided one day to, or not decided, but I kind of like always wanted to fix it and always wanted to address it. Um, but there came to a point where I started, you know, 
knocking off all the different options to resolve it and none of them worked. Um, and that journey what took 10 years. Girl, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's an important story to tell. And I'm sure in, on so many levels, it was hell to live through, but, but you, you were on a mission to, to burst through it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, so that actually took me to many different, um, many, many different worlds um, to solve it through psychiatric help or, you know, through medical doctors, um, through all these, like even changing my entire like health and wellness um, regime, regime, uh, <laughs> my alarm clock is ringing because it's like super early in the morning here and all the alarms are still here. Um, but yeah, so health and wellness, I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm going to change my diet, change my lifestyle, work out every single day, seven to 8 a.m. before work. Um, did that for a year. It didn't go away. Uh, did all the psychiatric stuff. Didn't go away. And I was just like, okay, like what's the next thing that I could do? Did all my coaching work, did all the um, mindset work, um, neurolinguistics programming, like reprogrammed myself, um, still didn't work. And I was like, okay, what's next? You know, maybe you need to like, um, do chi masters. I actually studied with a qigong master for five years to work through like the emotional chi, the emotional processing work, um, like intensely. And none of them worked until like the very, um, I even went to South America to do ayahuasca with um, shamans and thinking that that was going to, you know, break the pattern of, um, of stress coping um, through this method. And that didn't work either. And I was like really basically strapped for options. And, um, and it wasn't until I got to, um, I basically, at one point, I, during that time, my work was also um, kind of, let's say the opportunities or there was a lot of shifts in the work. And at that time I had decided, okay, the only thing that was the same throughout these 10 years um, was actually my work. And maybe, you know, after all this change, <laughs> this thing might need to change too. And of course I didn't want to give it up, you know, the paycheck, like the prestige, the status. Um, but it wasn't fulfilling me, and I and I decided, you know what, I will give it a shot, let this go, and also like do my last resort in this healing retreat in uh, Spain. And so there, I worked with plant medicines as well as meditation, and I got to a point where there was this one moment in it where I was just basically asking myself this question. It was like super clear, everything was like super silent, and I just felt so connected with myself, and I asked, you know. Um, am I ready to let this illness go? And uh, from deep within me, a voice came out that wasn't, I wasn't controlling it. Um, and before I could finish the sentence in my head, it said, yes. And, um, and from that moment onwards, I just knew that, you know, I had to do what I needed to do to stay on this path of being connected with myself and, um, and then sharing all the tools that I had learned along the way with everyone so that they could be on this path as well. And then through example, um, bring and um, inspire others to do the same. And so that turned into the group program, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and, um, and then it continued to, you know, travel uh, and just like lay out all those ways of, uh, of sharing that work. I think like there's like, yeah, just, I was just like, there's like so many other places where that just spread. Um, but it really is just a decision and an honest look at what really is. Um, so you don't have to necessarily, and you know, getting over the fear of that, that intimate connection with yourself. For sure. That, that's, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing right there for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I know so many people who are so fearful of that interconnection of truly, truly listening, of being quiet long enough to hear what is yeah. it you really what want, what what are your desires? And mm -hmm. and so how did YOLO come from that? Because um 
because most people always told me, you know, you can either do A or you can do B or you can do C. Um, there are always options that were set by society. Um, you either are in corporate or you're an entrepreneur or you are this or you are that, right? And so for me, it's like, you know, like you're either Asian or you're American. And so for me, I'm just like, hey, like, you know, are you either from this country or from that country? And for me, it's like, okay, like I am such a collab like a mixed um, pot of everything that I've experienced. And so You Only Live Once really promotes the choice of choosing like what part of you you want within yourself from all these different cultures. So when I'm in the U.S., people think I'm Asian. When I'm in Asia, people are like, you're definitely not Asian. So you know what I mean? So You, you Only Live Once is that identity that you can create for yourself um, within you as a person, but also your business as a business. It doesn't have to be a traditional entrepreneur company because most people are like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to follow these seven step systems and that's my company. Um, and that's what I need to do to get my marketing out or that's what I need to do to um, achieve this. So even in the entrepreneurial world, even if you stepped out of the society, uh, stepped out of like societal norms of doing business, like there's still structures that people kind of like all kind of clamor towards. Um, but you only live once really embraces this idea of being really deliberate of every part of, um, and that's of the organism like that. that, you know, you call life and career. <laughs> And as an entrepreneur, I think that's really, really so, I mean, as, as a human, that's really important, but as an entrepreneur, because there are so many formats mm -hmm. to learn, but if you don't make it yours, mm -hmm. you, you don't, you can use that as a, a bouncing off point. And, and this is something I, I have told my dancers in training uh -huh. for the years and years and years. Yes, we have this beautiful format, but it's still about you. Yeah. I mean, it's about the connection with all of us. Yes. That's really important. But who are you in that circle? We're all Definitely. important and we're all, we all have a statement. We're all here for a purpose. We're not, you know, cookie cutters. We don't have to be exactly this, this, and this. Um, and just to make it yours, to live your life, right? Right. And to know, to notice too, especially when you talk about in terms of dancing, right? Like in terms of creativity, to notice that what are the things that make your, your body, if your body is your, let's say machine or an extension of your soul, like what do you need to do in order to let the inspiration flow through, let the creativity flow yeah. through? Because you don't have to do all the work and create the creativity. It's already there. You know, the inspiration is already there. Like you already can like, get into that flow but it's like what needs to get out of the way um in order for you to receive and express that and that works in performance it works in writing a book it works in creating a new program it works in um, a new endeavor um, but it's just about being so um in tune with that part of uh, that channel within yourself and there it is there's that connection that people are so fearful of connecting with yeah like the truth, right? Like there was one, uh, one of my clients recently just broke up with um, her boyfriend. And I mean, all of us like experienced breaking up before. And one of the questions she wanted to ask, like this consciousness machine that we just did in China was, you know, uh, is it, do, uh, do I want to get back with him? Is it in the right, is it in the highest good to get back with him? Right? Because like you kind of like, well, after a breakup, you're always wondering like, is this the right direction? Should I not do this? Uh, and the question is always like, do you really want to know the answer? You know, <laughs> what if the answer is yes? What if the answer is no? And so a lot of times when we're like facing ourselves and we're asking ourselves like, oh, is this the right direction? Do we really want to know the answer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. So definitely a good question. And, and what is the truth? Is so the truth? yeah, so getting, yeah, exactly. So getting really, really courageous when you're facing the truth is, um, is definitely once the next step after you decide that, hey, you know what, like I am ready to look at the truth. And then the second point is like, am I really, really ready to face the true truth? <laughs> Yeah, really, really ready. <laughs> so here's a question for you. So sure. in this journey that you took, um, mm -hmm. the 10 years you were with the corporation and you kept uh, trying all these different things and you were 
still hiding your bulimia. Yeah. And now you are out with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and how was that shift for you? How, how you've allowed yourself to be vulnerable and open oh, yeah. to that truth so you can share it and also help heal others on that journey. So how, how was that, that transformation for you? Um, tenure bulimia, corporate was, corporate life was slightly shorter. Um, so during that time, even my parents didn't know about it. My boyfriends who were living with me didn't know about it. So the first, there was like, I would say the transformation was in three stages. The first stage was actually, um, admitting to myself that that's okay. Um, well I healed and that problem never came back. So that was like a win. Um, then I was like, all right, cool. Like now this is like a hero's story, right? It's no longer like I'm no longer struggling. So that, um, so it was definitely easier to do that. But secondly, like when I started speaking in front of crowds, thousands of people, like I knew I needed to share that story, but I was so afraid of judgment. Um, and so the transformation, the second level of transformation was not only admitting to myself that and owning to myself that, hey, the secret, this part of me that the whole world hasn't seen before, which basically was 60% of like my life. Um, and I was only performing with like having 40% of my energy, like, like this part um, is there. But then sharing that with the world was another challenge, right? Like being facing all the fears of judgment and like, you know, you feel like you're just going to die because people are going to crucify. Like it's like some really irrational thoughts when you're on stage um, sharing that story. And, um, and I literally like burst, like after the, after one of my first talks in front of hundreds of people, I, I like won some uh, speaking competition uh, that, you know, one of the top four or something like that. And so I got a chance to present like my topic and one of the first parts of the topic was actually sharing the story. And, um, and with that, I really, really felt like uh, vulnerable on stage after it, everyone clapped and, you know, and so people were just kind of chatting about like, uh, like, you know, right after the talk, I was still on stage and the organizer of the whole meeting um, of the whole event was asking me, how are you feeling about it? And I was like full of tears. I was so ashamed. And I was just like, I think I did crap. You know, like I think people were bored and things like that. And he was really surprised. And he asked me, um, he said, hold on, can I share this with the group? And so he asked the group and was like, hey, you know, um, what do you think? Like, you know, what do you notice about her? And, you know, just kind of getting everyone back involved and engaged. And the second question was, um, can, I want to share with you what she told me. She thinks that, you know, you guys thought she was boring. Like, what do you think? And then everyone was like shouting at me. And was like, no, like, you know, that's not true. Like, you know, you are amazing and things like that. And which is when I realized that our fears of our own vulnerability and our stories are actually like all here <laughs> well, yeah the connection means more than anything and you can't and the fastest way to connect is just to be you and to put your heart out there um and that's when people started well and that's how they you. relate i mean people mm -hmm. want to hear your stories they want to know exactly. that you're human and that you're real and you've gone through shit and, and you've come out on top and you're you know shining and um it's connection and it's real right it's absolutely vulnerability is hard and uh and so that was your your first big experience and then i'm sure not that it became easier but even more real for you to relate your story more after that i assume for sure because i know more stories after that right so that was the only the breaking point for that moment and then after that it was kind of like okay there's this whole blank slate and then building the business going through you know money struggles mindsets like worthiness issues um things like that where then you're building up confidence in yourself that um that you can really take your value and put your value out there and then believe in it so much that you, that others can see that value too. And so that's the next step of entrepreneurship where, you know, that really determines 
um, how you do in your first, second, third year. And you, that usually takes, you know, three years, I would say, for someone to truly understand what their offer is, what their value is. Uh, it took me a while and it's, it's continuously evolving too um, because you step into bigger and bigger um, or deeper and deeper work. And, and continue to expand. Yes, absolutely. And it's not, it's never, um, it's never as easy as you think. Cause like some things still come from left field, right? And I'm sure you experience it too. When you see something and you're like, oh, like, you know, you resonate with it and you're just like, I could totally do that too. And then you're like, okay, but my year is so full, where would it fit? And then, and then everything shifts and you're just like, all right, like, you know, you're taking your, you're taking your value system, you're taking your passion, and then you're like taking a leap again. So that, that action of taking a leap is something that is consistent, I feel, in, in this uh, journey. Always. So that's the more important thing to practice, the muscle of taking a leap each time. And, and, I, and I actually love that. I've, I personally have always loved change. I've always loved yeah. the challenge and the expansion and what all is possible. You know, to be a possibilitarian, I love that, that idea, that word, and um, just to continue to grow, because when you don't grow, what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Or you're dying because everyone else is growing. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so um, what, a, what, a beautiful, what a beautiful story you have and what amazing things you've done so far. And so tell us about your book and what's next. Sure. Um, so the book is about everything we talked about. You only live once. It's, um, it's structured in 10 chapters, which is basically what our, what our um, program is all about, taking you through all the steps of like, connecting with yourself, your strategy, um, your ideal clients, money, the spirit of money. So I look at money as a spiritual um, energy. And then also then allowing that energy and the creativity that we talked about go through your offers, your marketing, and, um, and your action, especially energy. Um, like the, the amount of juice you have to execute. Um, so inspired action. So, so that's the book. Um, if you're interested right. in that, we have links for that. Um, and then if you're also more advanced in the entrepreneurial journey, you're going to be like, I need this energy piece more than all the other things, energy and clarity, right? And execution. And so when you can constantly find your focus and you can constantly execute seamlessly, that's when you feel like, hey, you know, like things are moving. And so that one is an orgasm and abundance. So the way that I see it is like, here you is where you are. Here is where you want to get. You sandwich it with abundance mindset and also um, using orgasm as a way to to allow and receive, to practice the allowing and receiving muscle that we talked about. Um, so that is also a, a program that I'm currently running, which is a 30 day experience um, for people to expand that muscle Ooh, and uh, in a sacred way, female very, way. Very, very <laughs> nice. Is that for women only? That is for women. Uh, men is men are also able to participate, um, but it is based on the female model of orgasm, which is through expansion, um, not goal orientated. Uh, it's more of a progress and journey orientated, and um, and it's all about receiving and allowing. Um, and then, how did you come to that? How did I come to that? Yeah. The money piece, right? So then the entrepreneur piece, the first thing was um, about sales. Like the most important part of your whole entrepreneur journey is making those sales. And so I used to think that it was a super weird word and I didn't want to, I felt guilty. I felt ashamed. Like I felt like I was taking advantage of people. Um, I felt like I was like, you know, manipulative. And so all those mindsets came into the way. And it was only when I was able to really um, not only own my value, but also realize that it's uh, of service to share what you have with others, mm -hmm. that I was able to break through that barrier. Um, and then once that barrier was broken through, there were still so many other blocks that blocked these, th this money float from coming in. And, um, and you know, you can meditate all you want, but I realized like the <laughs> most important energy that you need to really hone in on is allowing yourself to celebrate and receive. Hmm. And there's no easier way to practice that. Um, receiving is actually letting go of control, right? Oh, it's receiving is really like tuning in and... Opening up. 
just being still. <laughs> and so there's no better way to do that than to put yourself in a position where, you know, you seem like you have a goal, which is like orgasm, but then you are still sitting there or you're still being there with yourself in full presence and receiving. So during, and you can reflect that in the sales conversation or a tense conversation where you need to still be completely in your body, in your seat with that other person, even though you're like, you may be feeling a little bit weird. And so that's what I realized helped my clients the most because I realized that they would keep getting, they keep falling off that point. And I'm just like, how can I help them more? How can I help myself more? And so that's how that came into play. And then I went to research with these uh, sensual researchers uh, who researched this topic for 30 years. They live, breathe, and like that's their lifestyle. And so how I could integrate those lead teachings and like the rest of uh, the YOLO work. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's, that how, that's how that came about. And, and that really, um, I did a quick experiment that, um, that mirrored. Uh, so I did an Excel spreadsheet, like every single day I did it for 30 days and I mirrored it based on my revenue. And I saw that there was a significant increase. So I was like, okay, cool. From a quantitative standpoint for myself, like that worked. So let's share this with the world. Um, after learning that from them. Um, so that's been that. Um, yeah. Yes. 150 people came in one of the tents in Wonder Fruits. So I think it's a topic that people are starting to really value. Well, and that's a whole nother level of self-love and self-care and listening and tuning in and receiving and allowing. And I mean, it's just more levels, right? More levels, deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. And, um, and it's a practice. So it's not like you finish it and then you graduate. It's something that you integrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Graduated. So, yeah. You're like, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> no more. I'm done. The rest of my life. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so it's, um, yeah. So it, it's for sure. It's, it's a journey again. And then, and it teaches you to, to not need to always, you know, just kind of a thing when it comes to self-love. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then what's the other thing? And then, so, so then I also have another, um, meditation for you guys and that's about your best life. And so you can go ahead and listen to that. It's one of the um, audios that I did at a flotation device, a uh, flotation tank mm-hmm. uh, facility where it's basically like a sensory deprivation tank. You're in like salt water, eight tons of it, and you're floating and, um, and you get really in a high meditative state. And it's um, just for you to, it's like a hypnosis for you to imagine what your best life is without the barriers. So you're, you only live once life and then you go through like a door and you see like what your biggest block is, the truth of that block. And so if you want that, you can also grab that. Below. And so those are the links that, <laughs> that I'll attach in the, in the... Yeah, I'll have like a whole list of links that, um, that you can check out. That, that's, yes. really awesome. that's really awesome. So what's next for you? What's next? So there are a few things, right? So there is the Orgasm and Abundance 30-Day Challenge that's coming up. And that's um, a small group of people who are willing and interested in experimenting this on um, your own lives and your own businesses. Um, The second thing is the You Only Live Once Close the Gap program, which is basically closing the gap um, from where you want to be and in your YOLO way. And so that's also a group program that is uh, three sessions only. So it's a really short one that allows you to take that next milestone off your list. So those are two things. Um, And then the rest is really up in there because like Paris and Manila and China just threw me like 10 different like opportunities or the equivalent of that. And I'm just like, all right, you know, let's see what seeds will bloom. How beautiful. What a great place to be in for yourself for your work to really allow yourself to blossom and let your work expand even more as you help your clients expand. You're still allowing yourself that opportunity. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for the acknowledgement. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, I just love, I love getting, getting to meet people who are, doing similar work, but everybody has, again, their own take on it, their own, they bring their own life journeys to it, which is really important. Uh, And that's why one of the reasons I love being a coach and a a teacher is that I've lived a good full, you know, life full of different experiences and lots Uh lots of downs and we have a lot to share. 
with that that really that heart um, of giving and sharing and um, guiding, you know, as a coach. I mean, what calls you to be a coach? So what calls, question? What's, what, calls <laughs> what calls me to be a coach? Um, <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind is because, you know, it's lonely on this journey when you're constantly expanding and I want more people to experience that and, um, and like selfishly or not selfishly, I just, I want my community to experience that and so that they can also share this joy, you know, like what calls you to have kids? Like what calls you to have like a partner? You want to share like that part of your life and that excitement and just like, the thrill and the sheer joy of like doing your, you only live once life in my case, like with the people that you love the most. And I feel that coaching is like one of the fastest ways that you can kind of share that with them. So people have the choice of choosing whether or not to be on that path too. They don't have to be trapped in where they feel like they need to be. Um, and so that's really a gift that um, I share with my clients and then, they will then create their own version of their lives, which then will trickle through like, you know, their way of sharing their gift with their clients um, or business. Um, and so I feel like that's the, that's the best way that I can impact the world in a positive way. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful answer. <laughs> What's that? I didn't hear. And I was going to show you something too, but what, what did you say? Oh, about? I said Beautiful answer. This one is a, my vision board for 2018 you asked me what's next right it's not done yet so it's only like on step two but if you can see it's uh this is the middle of it uh -huh. and everything is just expanding outwards and inwards at the same time I, f I feel the spiral of it yeah awesome yeah so this is kind of um the energy that I want to hold for this year. And so whenever I'm making a decision, I tune into it and I see, okay, are these matching the commitments that I'm committed to this year? Oh, that's so good. Just to have that, that check-in and that, okay, what, what were my thoughts and where am I now? And am I following the path that I laid out for myself or that I desired for myself? And am I still on the right path or how is it expanding? I yeah. Mean, so much. There's so much. There's but so much to create, mm -hmm. to create a visual board, I think is so powerful. And I do that more with words mm. um, and I, and I do love vision boards, but I, I'm, I'm a wordy. I just published uh, my first poetry book, um, it's my third book, but it's my first poetry book. And I just, you know, in my first book was a photography book. My second book was a memoir experiential piece. And this last book is a poetry book. Beautiful. Um, yeah. What kind of poetry? It's, it's really, well, I call them my life shorts. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, you know, rambling, run on experiences um, of growth and expansion. And, growth and expansion, beautiful. You know, some sadness, some, some things about aging, some things about dance, some things about being a woman, some things about words. Life. 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 The juiciest thing of all. <laughs> good. Life is so good. Oh, well, thank you cool. so much for sharing. You're welcome. For waking up early and, and being part of this series of Heart and Hustle and for sharing and being vulnerable and opening yourself up to do the work. It's my do. pleasure. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful work in the world. And I love um, uh, meeting you and seeing the changes that you're making. Um, being a change maker, being a magic maker, and living full, living rich, right? That's so good. And it's so um, lovely to be able to share that with all of you out there in our heart and hustle land. <laughs> and as we are about to end this episode, I'm going to play my song again. That's right. Because movement is so important. Yep, there's your book. Woohoo! Love it. I love it. I love it. Is, that, is, it, <laughs> is it available on Amazon? You can get it on Amazon. It's a bestseller. And, um, and the physical book is coming out soon too, like this Great. one. Awesome. Fantastic. So you'll have all those links, people. And um, again, thanks for being here. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's such a pleasure. And Heart and Hustlers, keep 
heart and hustling. Right. <laughs> Just making it work and living that big, full, beautiful, rich life and going after what you want and what you desire mm -hmm. and asking for help when you need it, right? Asking for support. Yeah, so important. Some of the most like, yeah, you don't need to do it alone. Yeah, right. We are not here to be by ourselves. We are here for connection and support mm -hmm. and, and to pass on the love and that community, the community aspect of our world for sure. Um, so I am your movement motivator. I am your transformational lifestyle coach, movement, momentum, and magic. Um, Paulette Reese to me here with Heart and Hustle, Visionary Healers, Movers, and Shakers. And again, thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for listening in until we meet again. <laughs> See ya.